Bang, huge knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife cares not with us. And today we are checking out a knife by Michael Ziba. This is a beautiful knife. Michael Ziba is a Polish uh, man that moved to the U.S. in 2005. And he used to be a furniture maker with his father. And then he got into knife making. And he likes to, to add precious materials to his knives like silver titanium cobalt gold precious stones stuff like that this is a silver skull he actually got the best new knife maker in 2016 um in atlanta georgia and i think he was the first polish guy to get an award in the u.s at least in atlanta georgia he was in 2016 now i think he this is made in the u.s now he uh lives in either new jersey or new york but if you want to find out more information about him you can go online and go to his website and check him out and you can also check out some more of his knives this is a beautiful beautiful piece everything is gone over so nicely with this knife let's get in to this knife this is a seven inch knife with a two and three quarter inch blade here is the benchmade mini grip right next to it i don't think we need many size comparisons here is a benchmade bug out and that's good you guys know a seven inch knife right seven inches that's what it is Two and three quarter inch blade. It says damascus steel, titanium, and marble carbon fiber. The blade is very nicely done with this compound grind. It's got a nice thin hollow grind right here with a nice flat right here. Now I measured this at about 10 thousandths behind the edge. I didn't measure the, the upper part, the flat, but it feels like it goes up to about 15, 20 thousandths behind the edge. Very, very thin, very slicey, very nice. This is a small compact knife, but this blade, everything's been gone over very finely. Like look at the flipper tab. Look at how rounded everything is. And you can see the damascus steel lines in there. Just beautiful. Like everything's chamfered all the way around it very nicely. And then when I flip it open, you can see it over on, even over on this side. Everything's rounded. Look at the sharpening choil. Definitely missed the plunge grind, which is great. You can put your finger there if you want to. You can lock your thumb right up there. It feels really good. Um, the action on this knife. You know what? Let's go over the rest of the materials. Titanium. This looks like a lizard pattern almost. I really, really like it. I don't know how he gets this finish, but you can feel it. It's got like smooth and then all the little dots are, are rough. It almost feels like um, carpet or something. I don't know how to explain it. It's got texture. That's all I can say. It's very nicely done. Each dot is rough and you can see the flame anode they did or they might have did it with the electric current where they uh basically put a thin layer of plastic over it and then they take an electric current and they draw on it and that's what gives that they could have did that or just took a little mini torch i'm not sure which one they did but you can see it's got that that flame look very very cool now one thing um shaker mt is the one who sent this to me now shaker mt me and him have become pretty good friends lately um he's become my homie and he's just a really cool dude in the knife community and one thing i really like about the guy is he uses his knives he does not mess around and when he sent me this he said i could absolutely use it i could sharpen it and that <laughs> That got me going, man. That that really got me excited because that made it possible for me to do a real good and bad video and also really get the feel of the knife. Now, did I really use it? I mean, I, I put it through a couple sheets of thin cardboard just to feel how it felt in the hand. You know, I'm not obviously going to put it through anything that would even remotely scratch it aside from the stone I sharpened it on, so I can't really say that. I did sharpen it. Now, the one thing I want to say is when I got this thing, 
the edge was almost non-existent. And I don't mean it wasn't sharp, because it was sharp, but the, it was so fine, it was almost non-existent. It was like a micro bevel. So what I did was I didn't want to right after, you know, he said to sharpen, and all of a sudden I lay it back and put a big old fat bevel on there and got a big old edge on there. No, I didn't do that. What I did was I put my own micro bevel on there. But I made it just a little, little bit bigger, as you can see. I didn't quite make it a quite mirror polish because this whole blade is mirrored. So I put a semi-mirror polish, and what that did was that left an opportunity for some bite. So it still has some bite to it. It's very, very sharp, but it feels like glass if you rub your nail up it. Very, very fine, fine edge. And like I said, and if he wants a mirror polish on there, right after this video, he can tell me. And I'll absolutely finish it off to a mirror. But it's still a very, very nice little micro edge on there. And it is sharp, boy. It is really sharp. But let's get back to the blade. Very, very, er, to the knife. The clip works very well. Um, And then you can see the nice good ramp. Good in the pocket. It's a, it's a it's a relatively I mean it's got some weight to it, um, but it's a light knife you know it's a small knife so it's not very big. The, oh the backspacer this backspacer is made out of real silver, real silver, and then if you look in there, those are skulls. Look at that! See those skulls in there? That is crazy. So, I mean, he got in there with a file, or however he did it, I don't know, but he managed to get three skull faces in there. That is crazy and amazing. The backspacer's jimping does work. Now, in Kara's hands, she thought it was a little sharp in her palm. I have a little bit more... Um, which you could say rougher skin, so it didn't bother me, but it did kind of bite her a little bit. Um, I'll get to the bad in just a second, but everything has gone over with this knife very, very fine. Everything's rounded and chamfered. The access to the lock bar, very easy. It is, it is nice and tight right there in between the two scales, but look at that. They left you a nice little spot to unlock it. The action... Great action. Let me uh, zoom you out just a little bit. Okay, the action is amazing action. I mean, the detent is very crisp. You can hear it. Nice, strong detent. But not strong enough to where the flipper tab is hard to push or anything like that. Very nice and snappy. The detent, when you unlock it, is right there. But it doesn't have a reverse detent track, but it doesn't really need one. You can easily push past it, so it's not a big deal. Now, if you wanted to drop it on your thumb, you, you can, but it's not the easiest. You kind of got to swing it a little bit, and there you go. It's not really a drop shutty knife, which that's okay. It doesn't need to be. It's got a very light blade, and the tolerances are so tight that, you know, it's... um nice and smooth like it's frictionless yet it's uh nice and tight i like that action i love that type of action now if you want to slap it shut you can absolutely slap it shut when i'm shaking it i'm barely shaking it but easy to just slap shut if you want to if you unlock it right very nice but you can unlock it like this i kind of like the the relationship between the thumb and the pointer finger right here, it's a little divot, so you can go like that, and then it's already hitting. And then if you do hit the D10 ball, you can just push past it. But if you unlock it, you can push past it like that, right shut. This is the way I like to unlock it. I like what he's going with because, you know, not every knife... I love knives that are tools. I really do. That's my first fetish, but... Not every knife has to be like that. Even a knife that's made like this, that's almost like jewelry, is still made to, with precision and is still strong and is made with some of the strongest materials on the planet. 
And, you know, ever since the beginning of time, we've been doing that with knives. You know, a man walking around with his knife or sword, depending on how it looked and how it was built and how it was made, said a lot about the guy. It said a lot about who he was, what kind of guy he was, and who he was, like, basically in, um, I don't know, the pecking order, you could say. But, yeah, it says a lot about knife. And this thing is absolutely a tool that is also an art piece. I like that. Okay, so now the bad things. What don't I like about this knife? Well, there's only a couple things. One, the flipper tip is a little pokey. Now, since it is rounded and, you know, all over, the it's still, you know, it's still nice or easy to, to flip. It's not like it hurts, but it is a little pokey to the finger right there. You see how it is. It's a small flipper tab. And then when you get it back in here, you can kind of feel it right there. Now, it doesn't bother me too bad because I just go like that. I just put my finger right over it. I ain't got no problem. The ergos aren't the best with the clip if you hold it like this. But like I've said so many times, this knife, for the most part, I wouldn't be using like this. Shift, I use it like this. And then the clip is never bothering me. I cut like this. I cut like this cut like that then when i do have to cut like this i'm gonna put my finger over the flipper tab like that and i'm gonna hold it like this so you know it's never really gonna bother me but if you just grab it like this you feel the clip now the back spacer can be a little sharp in the palm you know like if you flick it like that that's how you flick your knives if you put it like that then like this that can i guess be a little sharp but it doesn't bother you if you just move it out of the way. Now, other than that, there's not really much more I can complain about. This thing is really, really nice. Oh, yeah, the steel. The steel sharpened up very nicely. I really, really liked this steel. Um, the heat treats seemed so good on it. Um, knocking the burr off, like when I sharpened it, knocking the burr off, the burr just... Right, I like it came off in a straight wire. I mean, it was just so nice. Everything about this blade sharpened up so nice. And I didn't want to, because when you sharpen a um a compound grind like this, you it's thin right here and then it gets thicker right here. So your bevel or your edge tends to be thin and then right there it'll just get thick. Well, I don't do it on a KME or nothing where that probably would have happened. So I could change my angle as I was sharpening to make sure it lined up really nicely. Everything looks nice and straight, nice and symmetrical. If that's the right word, <laughs> it looks really good. But yeah, I like this knife and I really enjoyed getting to, to handle it. Now I just want to add in really quick that these knives this knife goes for about 645 dollars which you can get michael zeba knives starting anywhere from the 250 to 300 range all the way up so depending on the materials that he used and yeah so you can check his stuff out on blade hq among many many other places thank you shaker very much love you brother peace